Greetings everybody and welcome back to uh, my YouTube channel. My name is Rich from Deep Groove Mono and uh, today it's story time with Deep Groove Mono. What are we going to do? Well, right here I have uh, the Blue Note Records Guide to Identifying Original Pressings. Okay, this is Fred Cohen's book. All right, love this book. Obviously learned a lot from it when I was first starting out. I did not stay in the first pressing game for very long as a collector. Um, it didn't take long for me to realize that there was just as much value for me personally in second and third pressings as there was in a first pressing. Totally get why some people might be really into the hunt and the chase for a first pressing, um, but you know, me personally, uh, that's not really where it's at for me. The main things that I look for are, uh, especially in Blue Notes, is the RVG stamp or the Van Gelder stamp. Um, I'm really mainly after his mastering work. Quite often there's subsequent pressings after the first pressing, second or third pressings, fourth pressings even, that uh, have the RVG stamp or the Van Gelder stamp that are, that are not considered first pressings. So, so and, I, and, I, and I definitely like to save the money um, when, uh, in those cases when, uh, when, it, when it costs less as a result. So why, why are we doing story time with the, uh, the Blue Note first pressing guide today? This whole thing's going on with uh, this copy of Blue Train selling for $12,600, right? And it is by far the most that a vintage jazz record has ever been sold for, at least as far as I know um, from all the research I've done over the years. I mean, you know, I, I commented on Ken McAuliffe's video who works at the Jazz Record Center who sold this record. And, uh, you know, I basically said what I'm about to say here that uh, this doesn't really surprise me. I guess maybe we could start before we start doing our uh, reading here it, uh, by, by just talking about the difference between an original and first pressing and if there even is one. Texting with Ken yesterday um, sort of emphasized that Fred doesn't really make the distinction between an original or first pressing. And I, from, from, from revisiting the book, I think that's probably true. More often than not, he just uses original. But what he means for all intents and purposes in my mind is first pressing. Um, I tend to categorize an original as something that sounds exactly the same as a first pressing. Anything that sounds exactly the same as a first pressing. And that basically boils down to the mastering and uh, um, the master lacquer that was used to press the record. What I think Cohen means when he says original is first pressing. I'll probably say first pressing just so there's no uh, ambiguity. So um, people were texting me and messaging me and telling me, oh yeah, check out this record that sold for this much. And you know, I was just kind of like, well, great. Like what else is new? <laughs> um, you know, a, a, a vintage jazz record I can't afford sold for thousands of dollars. Read the headlines. <laughs> but you know, just plain common sense uh, really I think kind of should shed light on the fact that we really can't know in these instances what is or is not first pressing. Basically, there's three possibilities for a record like this Blue Train, right? Either the New York 23 one side was pressed first before the West 63rd both sides. Either the West 63rd both sides was actually pressed first before the New York 23 one side. Or the third case is that they actually may have both been pressed at the same time and have come out of the same first pressing run, right? And there really is no way for us to know for sure which one of those uh, options is the actual reality of the situation. And I, I want to be clear about something. I admire Fred Cohen's work. I thought he was very scientific about this guide. Now let's, now let's continue on to page 77 where uh, we look in the section titled Transition Periods and Original Pressings. During the Blue Note label transition periods, i.e. From New York 23 West 63rd Street to the non-New York 23 West 63rd Street, Deep Groove to non-Deep Groove, and New York City to Liberty, the questions of what is an original pressing often becomes difficult and perhaps impossible to answer. Collectors tend to prefer any indication of an earlier pressing. The presence of a New York 23 or NYC or Deep Groove label will invariably be assumed to be original. This assumption, however, is not often supported by what is known about the company's history. At the pressing plant, the labels were applied at random. Sometimes they matched and other times they didn't. Given the frequency of mixed label occurrences, it is obvious that no one at Blue Note thought it important to have matching labels. 
Consequently, it can probably never be known whether, in many instances, a matched or mixed label pressing was the first to be manufactured. So what Cohen's saying there to me is the obvious that comes from common sense, and of course an authority like Cohen confirms it. You know, there's no way that we can really know for sure what was happening at these times. And um, the other sentence that I thought was really interesting was, um, collectors tend to prefer any indication of an earlier pressing. And he sort of takes that as like a baseline to start from for his guide. Um, that, you know, okay, um, New York 23 labels technically and generally came before West 63rd labels, so if there's a split label with New York 23 and West 63rd, he's gonna put that in his guide as the, the first pressing because he has to make a choice. And I totally get that. I think it's also worth talking about the double deep groove uh, issue for uh, New York label pressings. And then later on page 77, Cohen says, and I'm in the middle of the paragraph, after a certain point, it can never truly be known whether similar pressings for the same record whose only difference is the presence or absence of a deep groove on one, both, or neither labels is actually the original first pressing. But since collectors have a natural bias for any detail that suggests an early or original issue, the presence of a deep groove has been treated in this guide as an indication of an original, but only an indication. Look, I'm not trying to say that that record wasn't worth $12,000. I wasn't trying to say that it shouldn't be thought of as a first pressing. What I think is the appropriate way to treat it is the way that a lot of collectors are not, which is that we can't really know for sure. I think especially a lot of the first pressing fundamentalists, they feel like they have to draw a conclusion. They have to draw a definitive conclusion about what was first. And, you know, I just, I really don't think that that's the reality of it. You know, I think the reality is unknown, and I think that, you know, we can't really be sure. But to be specific, I think in the case of a record like Blue Train, I honestly think that the West 63rd with No Incorporated should really be also considered a first pressing. Um, because there's just really no way that we can know whether or which, which pressing run came first or if they weren't all done at the same time, the, the New York 23 one side and the West 63rd both side. That's it. I don't mean to make enemies with anybody here. Um, I have a lot of respect for Ken and what he does. I got a lot of respect for Fred Cohen at the Jazz Record Center. I just kind of wanted to bring to light what was written in the guide. So um, I am going to make uh, another video, maybe two, uh, in, the, in the near future, so uh, stay tuned for those, and um, yeah, I'll see you next time.